Hello, for this video, we will be talking about the PERT-3 estimate approach. In order to understand the PERT-3 estimate approach, we need to discuss again our base problem. One of the biggest uh, assumptions uh, that we were not able to discuss no, uh, under PERT-CPM is the fact that in this base problem, or in any project, no, with its list of activities, the duration is given. Okay? And, and the other assumption that we need to make is that this duration is constant. We are sure, for example, that activity A will last three weeks. Or, in general, you, uh, for you to be able to do manuscript, manuscript proofreading, you need exactly three days. However, that is one very big assumption because in reality, I don't think there is an activity where we are we can be very sure of its uh, activity duration. Just to give you an example, most probably some of you might be part of your uh, high school yearbook and one of the, the activities of producing your yearbook is the, the printing of your yearbook. And I'm sure the the printers will tell you, ah, we will be able to print your yearbook in three in three months. However, eventually you will you will understand and you will encounter problems that your your printer will tell you. And therefore, instead of waiting for, for just three months, it might be delayed. Let's say down uh, up to let's say five months. Or sometimes uh, your printer will be able to say, ah. There, there, there's some um, there's some luck that happened that we were able to finish printing the the yearbook faster. No, instead of instead of just uh, instead of uh, requiring three months, three months, it only required two months, and they were able to give you your yearbook uh, right away. So in this case, I don't think it is uh, nice to assume that these durations will be constant. And that is where PERT-3 estimate, the PERT-3 estimate approach will come in. Why? Because the PERT-3 estimate approach will assume that for each activity, there will be three duration estimates. A, B, and M. A is the optimistic estimate B is the pessimistic estimate, and M is the most likely estimate. So if we were to use these, uh, this example, most probably this duration can be our most likely uh, duration or estimate. And therefore, all you have to do is uh, ask your supplier, is there an optimistic estimate? No, is there a chance that they will be able to deliver it or do the activity faster? Or is there also a chance that they will be able to do the activity for a much longer duration? Now, before we actually go to solving no, problems where the duration is now probabilistic and not deterministic, we need to understand first the different assumptions um, for the model. First, the spread between your optimistic and pessimistic is six standard deviations away. Or, mathematically speaking, the variance, sigma squared, is equal to the quantity 1 over 6, b minus a. b minus a is the spread. And by dividing by 6, that gives us the 6 standard deviations away. Okay? And all you have to do is square because this is variance. So what does this mean? This means that given that each activity, each activity will have an A, B, and M value, then the variance of uh, A, B, and M will be computed this way. Okay. Next, the next assumption is that the problem distribution, the, the distribution of each activity duration is approximately beta. 
I'm sure you ha you haven't uh, encountered the beta distribution. Just understand, you may search for it. Just understand that there is a beta distribution. And in this case, we need to assume that the activity durations distribution is beta. What is more important for us is to understand what is the implication of assuming the beta distribution. The implication here is that in order for us to get the expected, no, the E, expected time of activity I, so E of T sub I is the expected time of activity I, what we need to do is to get its corresponding most likely estimate, optimistic estimate, pessimistic estimate, and use this formula. To easier uh, to, to understand the pro, uh, this formula easier, technically this formula is just saying that the expected time of each activity is weighted. And how is it weighted? Two-thirds of it will come from the most likely value one sixth of it will come from the optimistic and pessimistic okay i think to make this uh, equation complete we need a sub i because this is uh, the most likely pessimistic and optimistic value for each activity i and then finally the, 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 the final assumption that we have to make is that the project time, and I've, bo uh, I've, I've placed, uh, put, uh, put project time on bold, is approximately normal. Now, why did I put the word project time in bold? Because project, we, we have to differentiate project time with, so this is not equal to activity. Time. okay the, the expected activity time is this this is your e of t sub i however the expected project time is actually composed of the uh, expected activity times of the activities that are part of the critical path remember our discussion before in getting the project duration the project duration is determined by the distance of the longest path. So in order for us to get the project time, or in this case, the expected project time, it, is, it will still be composed of your uh, durations of the critical, uh, critical activities, or in this case, the expected duration of the critical activities. And this assumption tells us that if the the distribution of each activity duration is beta, then the distribution of the project time is assumed to be normal. And, and we will be using this assumption eventually when we will be checking out what is the probability of your project time finishing a particular time. Now, what I have here is the same uh, base problem, but I added your optimistic, most likely, and pessimistic values. And using these equations for your variance and your expected time, I was able to get these two columns. So T sub E is your expected time. Sigma squared is your variance. Okay? So, um... What I did here is to come up with optimistic, most likely, and pessimistic values so that the expected time, if you notice, has the same values as uh, what we used before. Okay? And of course, I made that happen so that we don't need to do any other uh, computation for the longest path uh, anymore because what we have here have the same values as what we used before. And therefore, we can say that the expected project time of the active of, of the project, no, we 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 have 
is composed of the expected times of the critical activities. And remember, the critical activities before were A, E, F, G, I, and J. And therefore, uh, the expected project time of the activity where the duration is now uh, variable no, will be 15. Okay? Remember that this 15 is not an exact project time. It's a, it is an expected project time. And because this project time is expected, then we can also expect some form of variance. And as you can see, the variance of your project time is composed of the, well, it is the sum of the variances of the individual critical activities, which gives us a total variance of 1.41. Getting the square root, we get a standard deviation of 1.1874. And remember, in our assumption before, the project duration is normally distributed. Therefore, we can actually ask this particular question. What does this question mean? Remember that the project duration 15 is just unexpected duration which means there are there is a chance that it will be delayed or it will uh, move faster therefore one possible analysis to the per 3 estimate approach is okay we know expectedly the project will last uh, in uh, 15 weeks but what is the chance that it will be late by two weeks or in this case what is the probability that the project time is at most 17 and how do we do this because project time is normally distributed, therefore, we, we just need to convert this to the standard normal Z. So, we get a probability of Z less than or equal to X minus mu. This is mu, the average, over sigma. Which gives us a probability that Z is less than or equal to 1.685. Which also gives us the actual probability of 95.4%. And therefore, what is the probability that your project, your project will be delayed at most two weeks? The answer is 95.4%.